All right, let's talk about my driver's first week over the road as a non-CDL hotshot. But first, I want to talk about this video right here where I recorded the driver backing in. You guys, uh, apparently everybody is an expert backer on the internet. Oh my goodness, I've never seen such a huge, massive blowback for rec like, oh gosh. It was Guys, understand, you can't see how tight my driveway is. You literally cannot see it, okay? So uh, he he did a really good job. When I, I just picked up my new trailer yesterday, okay, that's in this video right here, and I, what, I backed up, it took me three times with my new trailer to back into my driveway. Me, three times, and I live here, okay? Guys, understand, that driveway is tight, and when you can fall in with your steer axle into the ditch, you can. And so it's very, very, you gotta be very cautious. So all of the, like, I will defend my driver on that backup job, guys. It was a solid job, and it was a, it was a really tight situation. Uh, like, dude, if you think that was bad, bro, you haven't seen anything yet. You should have seen me when I first started. I couldn't back up at all. So absolutely nothing. I'm very, very pleased with my driver. Uh, I'm very happy overall with our first week. So if, if you if you were out there thinking that you could be some expert backup, dude, trust me. No, you couldn't. It, it's really that hard. Now, there were a couple of people that said, Alex, on a semi, the wheels are much further back than on a hot shot, and that's why. And I really do think that's the case because um, to my understanding, he was driving like some kind of agricultural trailer, like an end dump or something, which those are definitely all the way at the back. So that makes perfect sense. I really think that's the case. But anyways, let's jump into this first week, okay? This is exciting, okay? Now, we did uh, a total of four loads, okay? Two of them were direct customer loads, and two of them were load board broker loads, okay? So, um, I have all of the zip codes written down. We went from, uh, so four loads, right? Two loads from Texas and then one. Uh, so basically, I'll put the route on the screen. Here you go, here's the route on the screen. So we started uh, in, um, we, it was like the San, a suburb of San Antonio. It was, I think it was Shirts, Texas. And then we picked up in College Station and then we delivered one drop to Nashville and one drop to Kentucky. And then we, he had a, or no, he went to Kentucky first because they unloaded us on the weekend and then he dropped into Nashville and then he unloaded in Nashville. And in Nashville, I found him actually another partial going to St. Louis. And then, then I, you know, because of the time issue, I didn't find him anything to go from St. Louis to Kansas City to hop over that, um, which is fine. But, and then, and then he picked up in Kansas City and he went up to Wisconsin um, up there in between Minneapolis and whatnot. So the point remains the same though, that this was his route and he did 2,193 miles. So not bad for one week. And for everyone that's like, oh, how do you do 2,000? Guys, this was like, like 2,000 miles a week should be the norm, should be your standard. So if you are like getting into hotshot trucking, understand this was an easy, easy week. So for example, uh, he picked up Friday morning, those two loads, right? Um, in San, uh, Shirts, Texas and College Station. Those two loads he picked up Friday during the day. And then he delivered on Sunday in Kentucky, uh, Monday in Nashville, Monday he got loaded. Monday afternoon he actually delivered in St. Louis. Tuesday he got loaded in Kansas City and uh, then he delivered, what are we? Well, yeah, today's Wednesday. So right, so yesterday, like at the evening, he down uh, unloaded in Wisconsin. Now, you're like, Alex, Friday to Tuesday is not a week. Right, but here's the thing. Because he's been driving all week, one, he has to do a restart, okay? So that means today he's gonna be relaxing, doing a restart. But two, I already booked him a load going to Arizona for $2,200 from Wisconsin, but he can't pick that up till tomorrow. So it works out really well. He'll do the restart today, and then tomorrow he's gonna go grab that load, and then I'll have Friday to fill up the rest of the trailer because with the load, and then Monday he'll be down in Arizona. So, uh, so you wanna, and that's why I kind of let some things slide because from Kansas City to Wisconsin, there was some loads, okay? There was a couple of partials. Like there, a load came out last minute from Topeka to Wisconsin paying $1,200. I'm like, oh, dude, that's so good. But then I'm like, wait, hold on. If he has to deadhead back to Topeka because he was in Kansas City, then that wouldn't work out because that would mess up the schedule because then he wouldn't do a restart. And I was like, you know, then it would be, now you're empty in Wisconsin on a Friday instead of on a Wednesday. And that, so you want to be cautious with how you set up your weeks so that you're running really well over the weekend, okay? But anyways, that's just pro tips. But okay, so we did four loads, 2,193 
miles, and we did revenue wise $3,300. Okay, so $3,300 in revenue. Um, the first load from Texas to uh, Nashville was $1,200. The second load from Texas to Kentucky was $900. Uh, the small load from Nashville to St. Louis was $550. And that last load from Kansas City to Wisconsin was six fifty. So that's three hundred three thousand three hundred dollars. Now, if you already did the math, great. If not, it's three thousand three hundred divided by two thousand one hundred ninety-three. I believe that gives us one dollar and fifty cents. Excuse me. So a dollar fifty. I, a dollar fifty cents, basically, you can round down. Now, so, dude, and that's like me not really trying dispatching. This is me letting a couple of things slide just to make sure that the week is smooth. And so, dude, like, really, it's really not that hard to do a dollar fifty. Now, you might be wondering, Alex, well, what's your like break even cost, or like, what do you, um, you know, how much did you make off of that? And here's what I can say: at thirty three hundred dollars. Um, I don't want to disclose the driver pay because I, I did, you know, that's his, that's his, you know, thing. I don't want to talk about that, but let's just say my operating costs roughly is like a dollar thirty-five, dollar forty, right? So at a dollar thirty-five, dollar forty, I basically made about ten cents. So if I increase my rate per mile, which I plan to, obviously, like this is one of those weeks where I tried to really, really make it work. So for example, these two direct customer loads. First of all, I love direct customers, right? So if you have loads shipped, hey, my, my number's on my website. So, but the point means the same. I love direct customers, but uh, they're a little bit challenging to get to occasionally, right? And so the Texas to Kentucky load and the Kansas City to Wisconsin load, those were two loads that I had to coordinate to work, right? So there was a little bit of a scheduling conflict and stuff like that. So it was really interesting trying to make those work with this one driver and I was ready to hit the road if it didn't, right? So I was getting ready to take that Kansas City load, uh, it, but it, it worked out. So, you know, I appreciate the customers that are patient and that's fantastic. Those are the type, type of customers I want, you know, because, it, and dude, and this is the driver's first week and I'm trying to coordinate these direct customers loads, right? So it was, it was, it was a lot, right? Really short. So, so to be at a dollar fifty and thirty three hundred dollars in revenue, my first week out of the gate, absolutely amazing. I'm thrilled. I think the driver is doing fantastic. He picked up things like really quickly, um, loading, strapping, all of this stuff. Really, really awesome. So I'm like overall, I'm thrilled over the moon with how good this driver is doing compared to my other drivers when I had them. Obviously, well, my other drivers, the problem was, you know, I didn't have the enterprise rentals. And so, you know, the maintenance was over worse and I didn't have a good trailer. The trailer would always break down. And my, my trailer when I first started was a 32 footer, not a 40. And not that it made a difference this time. Actually, we drove around with a lot of empty deck space. It's ridiculous how much empty deck space we had from Texas to like Nashville and Kentucky. Dude, half the trailer was empty from, uh, from Kansas City to Wisconsin, half the trailer. Oh, dude, it was ridiculous. So, uh, you you know, so missed out on some money there. So maybe I can improve a little bit of dispatching, but it was so weird how also in like this week, the rates changed so quickly. I don't, dude, usually from Texas, like I've been saying from Texas outbound right now, it's super hot, fell apart. I like, I'm trying to book myself a load for the weekend, right? You know, cause to, why, not, why not have two trucks on the road? And no, it didn't work out. I, it's, I mean, obviously it's not the end of the week, but still it's like, wow, uh, rates fluctuate very quickly right now. So make sure you're staying out there, staying moving because, you know, sometimes it might be a good week and sometimes it might be a bad week, but make sure you just, you know, if you're out there working. But anyways, so I'm proud, $3,300. If my operating cost is about $1.40, $1.35, that means I made about 10 cents a mile. And so on 2,193 miles, I made $219. Not bad, right? But this means that I need a couple more trucks if I actually want to pay myself some kind of decent salary. So, anyways, so that means I'm I'm trying I'm shooting for four trucks. I want four company drivers because I think that's a good number, right? Three trucks. Right, three trucks and maybe my own truck. So that would be four trucks, but three drivers, right? Um, that's what I'm shooting for. And I'm waiting on enterprise rentals just like everyone else. I'm waiting on trailers just like everyone else. Anyways, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about this little uh, fender bender. Oh, no, I didn't hit a fender, I guess. I don't like, okay. So there's all of these driveways or all of these cars in my driveway, right? So I got uh, the driver's pickup truck, my 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 Dodge, uh, my my wife's van. CP Steve was at the house, okay? So, uh, and then and then uh, my, my Ford and then his, and then the new Ford and the new trailer. 
okay? All of these cars and trailers are in the driveway, okay? And it's it's Friday morning. <laughs> Uh, and it's Friday morning and I'm like, okay, hey, you got to go pick up the load. So just head out early in the morning. You'll make it there. No problem. Right? Uh, so the dr I'm sitting right here in my office and I hear some noise going out. I'm like, well, what is going on outside? Right? And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So anyways, I get a, I get a message from the driver. He's like, Hey Alex, you know, so, uh, and I go take a look right, you know, right outside the door. I'm like, oh no, what happened? And so, so what happens is there was a car right here, like right here. And so the driver was trying to swing out, go right, right? So he was clearing the vehicle. But what happened was because he took it so wide, the tail swing on the trailer, right? So when he went this way, right? The tail swing hit my fence right here. And so, yes, yes. Uh, the first week we did $3,300 in revenue and we had one accident. <laughs> so, uh, and I did ask for the driver's permission to talk about it, so that's totally fine. Um, I think it's better to wear your mishaps proudly. You know, it's like that whole Eminem thing. You know when Eminem, like, yeah, I'm a broke white rapper. Well, like, what can you, what else can you say? It's like that whole thing, like, you take the power away from your enemies when you openly disclose your mistakes. And I've done video, my top five most expensive mistakes right here. You know what I mean? I wear my losses and my mis mishaps loud and proud, okay? So, uh, yeah. But anyways, so the driver was super apologetic. Super apologetic. And it just scraped it, just barely. Um, traded a little bit of paint, but it did damage my fence. Um, and so, like, it's the, it didn't, like, the top bar didn't fall off. And I just kind of shook it loose and took that off just because it was already almost there. But the point means the same that looks like I will be having to fix a new fence or uh, I might just make the driveway bigger. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll just have to figure that out down the road. Uh, but here, let me show you. Let me go outside real quick and show you real fast. See, here's what I mean. This, this pipe didn't break. It was, uh, so what happened was when he hit it, he bent it and you see it's loose in the dirt now and it broke this weld and then it broke this weld and so i kind of just wobbled it and broke it off all the way um but i have been wanting to widen the driveway so i think this will be a good excuse just to cut these off. oh look actually these are broken too oh yeah he broke all these welds okay so this might be a good reason to cut it off here and just widen it for this section um so i don't know we'll see all right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I look forward to your comments on this one. Let me know what you guys think about my first week, about my rate per mile, um, about the dispatching. You know what I mean? I'm still trying to figure this out. I didn't say I'm an expert. You know, I still, I'm still trying to figure out how the driver's running. And it takes time. The, ultimately, I want you guys to realize that it takes time to get like in this flow between the dispatcher and the driver. So whether you're leasing on, whether you're just starting with someone, like it really does take time for you guys to figure each other, each other out. So keep that in mind when you're commenting down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.